I'm really happy to be here, and I'm happy that all of the inquisitive minds are here because every time I come to one of these things, there's always something new we've learned and, and are sharing. So uh, one of the sayings that I like is that from Carl Sagan, that a good scientist can entertain mutually contradictory ideas and that we have to have a willingness to consider even the most bizarre ideas and at the same time a harsh skepticism requiring hard evidence to back up every claim. So I, I know that that's exactly why most of us are here today while we sit in this conference and listen to all of the lectures about anti-aging and inflammation and realizing that we could live to be 100 and we want to know who we are and not be in a wheelchair. And what is that science? My experience over the last five years has led to a medical model that we're using to restore optimal function using hormones, nutri nutrition, detoxification, mind and body interventions. And I want to share that with you. Most of this intervent these interventions don't come from sources like these, but they come from sources like these. So they're based on sound evidence, and those of you attending this conference probably know that there's a lot of sound evidence here. But using a comprehensive model, we've been able to affect every, for everything from insomnia and panic attacks to fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, and a variety of other diseases. Um, my background as a gynecologist started me off easily in the area of hormones, although it took me a little bit of time and reading to understand what the benefit of using bioidenticals was. But once I started using them, I thought I had it down. And then came the revelation that if I didn't pay attention to the nutrition, I would fail because something simple like an iodine or a vitamin D deficiency wouldn't allow the thyroid or the estrogen or progesterone to work. And then came the revelation that if one doesn't look to detoxify the normal junk that we collect in our bodies, our bowels, our liver, the liver can't activate the hormones. Uh, similarly, without dealing with the stresses that are in the mind and pain and structural damage that's in the body, we're unable to really have what we would call a solid restorative model for optimal health. When it comes to hormones, in addition to looking at just the estrogen, progesterone, testosterone that I was traditionally trained to look at, it became also clear that without looking at the thyroid that controls all of these, the insulin, the cortisol, melatonin, which is an anti-cancer hormone, pregnenolone for memory and concentration, you couldn't affect the whole picture. And to give you an example, the first revelation was just looking at simple thing like progesterone. Progesterone starts to decline in our mid-30s, giving us lighter sleep, anxiety, mood swings. It is probably the number one reason for a Prozac prescription. Breast cysts, ovarian cysts, fibroids, heavier bleeding. In the early 40s, this is probably the number one cause for a hysterectomy. And because progesterone is the number one bone builder in the body, this would also make it the reason why majority of women and especially women, start to lose bone in the mid-30s to 40s. And we normally don't check it until the 50s. So when you start to look at the different things that change in the body, it becomes clear that when we get into the mid and late 30s and early 40s, that we're not acquiring Xanax and Prozac deficiencies. We're not acquiring a Lipitor deficiency. We are acquiring deficiencies that are related to the normal glandular processes in the body. And these hormones that we are deficient in affect every organ because the receptors for them are present on every single organ in the body. So not only do they cause a host of symptoms that you can see on the left side of the page, but they also affect and cause degenerative disease in all of the organs that are on the right side, the brain, the heart, the bone, so on and so forth. The maze that once existed around the sex um, hormone replacement really is a thing of the past because the medical standard is to restore what is missing with what is missing. So medically speaking, when we're looking to restore optimal function, it makes sense obviously to replace the hormones. We have all faced this issue with the WHI study and just briefly there were some reasons why the WHI study found what it did um, and in fact a reanalysis has shown that 
using hormones in women who are way past menopause and using the oral route, which over three dozen studies in the cardiac literature now show that the transdermal route for estrogens is actually clot and breast protective, using ratios of hormones that are heavy in estrone, such as Premarin, and using a synthetic progesterone like progestin are some of the, the causes. And in fact, the North American Menopausal Society in July of 2008 redid their position state statement to state that the benefit to risk ratio is favorable around menopause and decreases with aging. So the medical literature is starting to support um, this and the way that one gets around that is to use hormones that are identical to the body, even soy is not identical to the human body, and you can use FDA approved uh, bioidenticals. In fact, I use them quite frequently, and there's a whole host of them and a growing host of them, so there's no reason. So we've actually learned some things from that study, like using hormones early and mimicking normal ratios using transdermal methods that you'll see in the case presentations that allow us to safely use them in a wide variety of diseases. In addition, all hormonal therapy should really include the, th the inclusion of of all of these hormones simply because, as, as appropriate, because thyroid activates testosterone and progesterone activates thyroid, and every receptor is dependent upon the receptor for the other piece. That brings us to nutrition. Why is this not working? Oh, there we go. Okay. So nutrient deficiencies prevent the action of hormones. Iodine is part of almost every hormone receptor. Zinc, part of estradiol, testosterone, and growth hormone. Cobalt, estrogen, chromium, progesterone. Boron, estrogen, and testosterone. Methyl donors are needed to clear estrone. And vitamin D3 is needed for every hormone. And obviously, it's very clear that if you don't have these things on board, you're not going to have proper activity. And I can tell you from, from therapies, and any of you who have used these therapies may know this, um, luckily, we don't have to guess anymore on nutrition. There are ways of analyzing our nutrition um, that allow us to become knowledgeable and guide the nutrition without any problem. Um, toxicities is the next area. We're exposed to more chemical toxins than those in many countries. Part of this comes from all of the preservatives that we have in our food, the sugars, the electromagnetic radiation that we're being exposed to even sitting in this room. And therefore, we have a lot of junk in our bodies that doesn't allow the proper mechanisms to work. Most of that junk lies in the bowel, and the bowel is the first organ that produces B vitamins actually produces them and also produces serotonin. So that would be the connection between fatigue, depression, and constipation. And if you look at a pet or you look at an infant, we realize that the bowel actually is supposed to move when you eat. So two to three times a day is exactly where it's supposed to be. Uh, the bowel is also re responsible for the glucuronidases, which are responsible for breaking down your estrogens and your testosterones. So they're all very connected. The liver similarly activates thyroid, activates estrogen and testosterone. Tissue acidity, that means a pH under 7.0 is going to prevent the chemical reactions at the, at the tissue level. For every 0.1 drop, you lose about 5 to 10 percent of chemical reactions. So obviously maintaining an alkaline tissue pH is critical for optimal function.